welcome back to Headbangers Ball, coming to you from Oakland, California, and we're moving on up the bill. And up next, we're going to be talking to Corn. I've got Jonathan and David joining me here in Oakland. So, uh, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Headbangers Ball. How are you? We're doing good. I'm tired, but love it. Look at this weather. Beautiful. It is. Now, you've been out on the um, Ozzy Osbourne US tour, and actually I was talking to Life of Agony recently, who did the last leg of the tour, and they said it was a real kind of eye-opener for them, and uh, quite a challenge to play these shows, that they learned a lot, so um, what's your take on that? Um, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. It's just different playing such a large amount of people. It's different from, you know, playing in clubs, so you got to get used to it, but overall, it's, it's cool. I think so. I mean, you know, your show is kind of very um, emotional, very intense. How is it put? How is the impact of that in a bigger venue? Is it more challenging for you to get that across? Yep. Definitely, because the places are so big, it's like 30 yards before the first row of people, and it's not intimate. It's not like you can make eye contact with a little group of people and kind of get them in on your your little vibe or whatever. Everybody's so far, it's like you're playing to the mass. It's not as good. Clubs are better. Way, way, way better. better. And some of, some, of the, some of the venues, they got chairs, so people are sitting down just going, yeah, it, it's hard. Still, like, even still, they're like, yeah, it's, it's not like, like any clubs, I like this a lot better at theaters. That's where it's fun. You can't smell them. That's it's quite a hard crowd to win over as well, isn't it? Because it's a real Aussie crowd. Yeah, but they've been giving us some respect, and I think they've been getting into us. What'd you say? Yeah. It's been good. It's been really good for us. Good. And why did you do um, a support slot with Ozzy when you could have obviously done your own headlining US tour? Uh, you needed to reach new fans. Yeah. Basically. We, already, we, we did one here and got done with that. And then uh, there's a lot, lot, lot more people in a different, a different, totally different scene. So you know how we like to jump from scene to scene yeah. and snake <laughs> everybody's crowd. And you've been on the road for so long, so just very quickly, what is the effect of having been on the road for so long? Are you going crazy yet? Brain bruising. Lots of brain bruising. Can't talk no more. <laughs> All right, well, you don't have to actually because we're going into a video right now from Korn's debut album, self-titled. We're going to check out the brilliant video for Shoots and Ladders. More Korn coming up after that. Next interview, I'd like to sort of concentrate and focus a little bit on more on the lyrics because um, a lot of the songs on the album seem to be a little bit about being an outcast. Um, I was wondering, did you exorcise a lot of demons when you wrote those songs? Oh, definitely. That's like, this is my outlet to get everything that made me mad when I was a kid out. So, went through a lot. It's been really like a pissed off kid. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was fun to do that, probably get that off my chest. I mean, like you said, a lot of those songs are very emotional. I mean, how difficult is it to keep um, singing those songs you know, night after night, when obviously some of them are kind of quite painful. Uh, it's fun to get that out. I mean, a lot of people walk around with all kinds of bottled up anger, and I get to do it every night, so... I mean, even if I'm not mad, I start, I look back at stuff, and it pisses me off, and it gets me pumped. And then David, like, punks me up sometimes. You need to dry out whatever aggression you have in you, even if you don't even know it's there by the time when the show starts. But I mean, you know, you're in, having met you a few times, you're a very good-natured person, so how do you kind of get in the mood to actually sing those lyrics with so, so much kind of anger? Oh, uh, it's like a vibe I get into. I get into a vibe before I go on. I think of certain things I can't say, and I go. I just do it. Once I hear the music, the first note, I'm there. Yeah, I can imagine the music is very inspiring in that respect. Now, you um, you work with uh, Ross Robinson as producer, and uh, actually I was just talking to Max from Sepultura a few weeks back, and he said that one of the things that he really appreciated about Ross was that when he worked with him on the lyrics, he was like, it was a very personal kind of intense relationship that brought the best out in him. Did you find that with Ross? Yeah, Ross pulled a lot of stuff out of me. He made me feel like it's okay just to let this out, and he made me feel you know, like it was, it was cool to do this, and... So it helped me out a lot when I was first starting out, because I was, I didn't know what to do. I wasn't a singer, I just played one on TV. No, but um, really, I had no clue what to do, and he, he, he brought the stuff out of me, and uh, with the help of these guys, that's how we made the album. 